Today, we're going to talk about double-stranded DNA repair. In previous videos, we talked about single-stranded DNA repair. So in this video, we are going to talk about double-stranded DNA repair. Double-stranded breaks can occur due to ionizing radiation. And there's two ways that you can repair this. One is with non-homologous end joining. The other way is by homologous recombination. And as you'll see, one is a lot better than the other. Let's first talk about non-homologous end joining. So let's take a look over here. So non-homologous end joining brings together the two ends of the DNA fragments in order to repair the double-stranded breaks. It's highly error-prone though. So how I like to think about this is it pretty much just takes the DNA and then glues it back together. So this allows for essentially a crude way of DNA repair. Something to mention is that this non-homologous end joining occurs before the S phase of the cell cycle. Now what happens if there's an issue with non-homologous end joining? Well, defects in the ATM protein can cause problems with non-homologous end joining, and this can cause the disease ataxia telangtasia severe combined immunodeficiency, as well as Fanconi anemia. Let's first talk about ataxia telangtasia. So this is an autosomal recessive disease that presents with ataxia, so that's essentially difficulty walking and problems with coordination. Telangiectasias, which are shown here, they are dilation of small vessels and capillaries. And then lastly, you have increased risk of lymphoma and leukemia. And that makes sense because you have an issue with DNA repair. But not all issues with DNA repair will lead to increased risk for cancer necessarily. Now let's talk about SCID, which is severe combined immunodeficiency. SCID can present, it will usually present in children with severe bacterial as well as viral infections, diarrhea, as well as chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. So that's shown right here on the tongue. So SCID is, occurs due to issues with B or T cells. So essentially the immune system is not working well. Now let's talk a little bit about the candidiasis that you see right here. Usually when we think of candidiasis, we think of HIV or AIDS patients, as well as patients who use inhaled steroids but less commonly it can be due to an immunodeficiency like SCID. Now that we have talked about non-homologous end joining and the issues that arise, let's talk a little bit about homologous recombination and compare it to non-homologous end joining. So as we previously stated, homologous recombination is another way to repair double-stranded DNA breaks. However, it requires two homologous DNA strands. This is unique because it uses a complementary strand. So as you can see down here, it uses a complementary strand to repair the damaged DNA strand. Because of this, it has to occur after the S phase and it'll use the sister chromatid as a template. And as you can imagine, if you have a template and you're not just gluing the pieces back together, it's less error prone. So homologous recombination is less error prone than non-homologous end joining. And I'm sure many of you guys have heard of the BRCA genes or BRCA genes. So those genes are tumor suppressor genes that are involved in homologous recombination. And defects in that can lead to breast and ovarian cancer. Now let's do a quick summary of this video. When you have double-stranded DNA breaks, which can occur due to ionizing radiation, you can either repair it by non-homologous end joining or homologous recombination. Non-homologous end joining essentially just sticks the two ends of the DNA fragments together, is highly error prone, occurs before the S phase of the cell cycle, and then defects in that can cause certain diseases like ataxia, telangtasia, SCID, and Fanconi anemia. Now, homologous recombination is the other way to repair double-stranded DNA breaks. It's a little bit better. Um, it's less error-prone than non-homologous end joining, and it has to occur after the S phase using the sister chromatid as a template. Problems with homologous recombination due to issues with BRCA tumor suppressor genes can lead to breast and ovarian cancer. 
That pretty much sums it up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.